Hi, I'm here today with John Bates, CEO of Test Plant, established author, futurist, thought leader in the IoT space, and all round good guy. Welcome, John. Thank you, sir. So, John, we caught up at the Cloud Expo a few months back now. Yeah. Um, and we were talking about smart cities, that approach with our IoT. So, what have you been doing? Well, since we last spoke, I've been uh, a little busy. I, my company that I was working for at the time, I was CEO of a company called Plat One. And um, in the meantime, since we last met, Plat One was acquired by SAP to form the core of what they're calling their SAP Leonardo platform for providing them a platform for Internet of Things applications. And I was in the process of joining SAP when a former investor in one of my other companies, the Carlyle Group, came along and brought me this amazing company, incredibly disruptive company in the testing space, very relevant to testing IoT apps, for example, called Testplan. And they said, would I like to come and be CEO of that? So I was very compelled by that, and so that's what I'm doing. I've just, this last week, moved to London to, to run this UK headquartered company. So, wow. So, I guess the, uh, the answer is in the name, Test Plants. Um, R&D testing for IoT apps, um, templating that, enabling more people to introduce their, their IoT smart app, maybe, and you'll just help them with that, or how does that work? Absolutely, well, I mean, the, the whole new world of digital, if you like, of which IoT is a part, digitizing the real world, incorporating it with uh, the digital world, it's just a completely you know, new ball game, in which case you have all of these capabilities at the edge, as um, you know, sensors, edge devices, as well as you know, the interface of the user in the mobile world, and then you have the cloud in the middle. You know, po all populated with microservices to which you have to try and you know compose an application with. And the complexity of it is, you know, testing is no longer just about does your code work? Is there a bug at line three? It's about is this app going to delight? your users are these are your users going to give this a five out of five in the app store is it going to be performant and high quality under these very complex circumstances that iot brings us so it's a new world you don't even own the code a lot of the times so you're going to compose all those microservices together that are already out there and layer on a front end and so on so you really need it's the application of an artificial intelligence type approach to use an application as a user would as well as plugging into those APIs so you can test the data streaming from the edge to, to, to the front end and that the user experience, if the user was using this under different circumstances, is going to absolutely blow them away. That's incredible. So we're moving, I mean our generic infrastructure is moving further and further to the edge uh, of, of any, any network you know, and you know with the, the, the innovations now available with, with IoT, you know, it's not just a, a, a fire alarm sensor off and on, it's far more complicated than that. How do you see, I mean, that, that changing? You need somewhere to ensure that, I guess, that it's, it's secure, it yeah. works, it does what it says. Yep. Um, not reporting back to some mothership that some nasty hackers that are reporting back from. So if I have this idea for an IoT or a smart app, I could come to you and, that, and you would help me develop this or and you would help me test bed it and R&D this out or how would, how would you really assist me with that? Joel? Well, I mean, we, we can talk about, there's a couple of angles there. There's about, you know, you've touched on a number of topics, which is, you know, apps are moving to the edge. I think that's absolutely clear. I mean, we got comp when we went to the mobile era with iPads and iPhones and all sorts of different varieties of, of phones and Android and so on, you've got complexity at the front end. But then this edge that you've talked about has brought us a lot more complexity at, if you like, the back, the back end or the edge and with the cloud in the middle. And um, I think, you know, building with an IoT platform, that was the approach you know that I've always advocated, and there's a you know there's a few companies out there that do it big and small that would would try and help you to do that. But that's going to build you, you know, your application functionality, help you to prototype that quickly, 
And on your security point, that should incorporate the ability to secure from the app right to the edge, you know, based on role-based security, for example, you want to be able to lock down that stream so that you've got some control of it. We've seen crises around where, you know, this very decoupled world with things just stuck out on the internet enables, you know, hackers to hack in and use, you know, 100,000 internet-enabled cameras to attack, you know, a government website, for example, or the NASDAQ and so on. We've got to we've got to protect we've got to be able to protect against this, and I think platform enabling IoT deployments is you know with end to end security is one way. But in terms of testing that application, I think you yeah you have to be able to um, one of the approaches that you know I believe in and and that we we live in test part is using intelligent you know artificial intelligent algorithms to understand your system and to help you automate the generation of testing scripts if you like that would then be automatically executed against that system so it's not just about automating the process of testing a system it's about automating the process of understanding and generating what to test and then to review what the results are and to feed that back in so i've long believed that writing code has to in the way we do today has to end eventually or evolve it has to have it has to be assistance and higher level automatically generation of code and that's the approach we've taken to the automatic testing of it understanding the system helping to automatically generate helping to execute those tests and then to feed that back mm. to make try and make your make your life easy do you think um we're going to be worried that actually we'll we'll have to engage with machines that talk a different language and we won't understand what that means could we be on the brink of um, having a, a man against a machine kind of environment that, you know, people like me who don't code and don't understand how a computer can talk to another computer and analyse with their own machine code language and create that divide. Where's it going to end? Well, yes and uh, there's, there, uh, there's a yes and no to that. So I think no at the moment in that, you know, you've got people like Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk saying, oh my goodness, we're at the brink of computers becoming so intelligent they're going to take over. Um, and that both those people are two of my heroes, by the way. But um, I don't think they're right. I mean, if you, we're not yet there yet. We've got a little way to go on, on the, the, the artificial intelligence before it becomes Skynet from the Terminator movies. We're not there yet. Yeah. However, let's give the other side of view. Here's an interesting angle to you. Amazon Alexa... Google Home, you're talking to a somewhat artificially intelligent entity there. Now, it's not, and, but it's not talking a different language, it's talking your language. So think about putting a voice interface on things. Alexa, can you test my IoT app? Alexa, how many you know, defects did we have? Alexa, how, what, would be, what do you predict would be the number of stars we'd get or the net promoter score if we put our app live today? I think testers and developers are going to start to use natural language interfaces to help them, backed up by you know, an, uh, sort of artificial intelligence code generation and, and so on and so forth. So that is talking your own language, isn't it? That's scary, eh? <laughs> and now I've got to ask this question, John. Um, what is the most bizarre IoT app you've seen out there at the moment? Oh my goodness, what's the most bizarre uh, yeah. one? I'm really, I'm trying, I'm, I mean, my favourite yeah. one, and it's not, it, it, it's, I don't know if it would be bizarre. My favourite one, you can tell me if you think this is bizarre, yeah. is the one that uh, we worked on with Pirelli, in which they were putting sensors into tyres. Really? And the idea being, when you think sensor in a tyre, the idea is that to go from being a sort of commodity tyre seller to being a seller of big data analytics. So imagine you're providing a fleet, ma fleet management market, trucks, 18 wheelers and things with, with tyres. And you, instead of, you know, if you can now suddenly monitor the pressure of a tyre, the temperature of a tyre, the braking forces, and it might be collect to a telematics box on board a truck, which you give away maybe for free as part of mm. the contract, um, and that's an edge device. Mm. So that device is connecting wirelessly to those tyres, 
with their little wireless sensors. And then it's connecting over, say, GSM or whatever to a cloud back end, which is doing big data analytics. So you're able to do things like sell or give give to the your um, your customers, how are my drivers driving? Are any driving dangerous? Oh, things? dear. Um, is there opportunity to save money? So you're wasting 10 mm. cents a mile due to underinflation on these tires, pull into this depot, you know, so it's location mm. aware. But most interestingly, I'm not going to sell you those tires because I'm tracking them and I know how much you're using. I'm going to lease you tire as a service. Oh dear. Based on how much rubber you use. Is that, how, what do you think of that one? It's well, bizarre but cool, huh? I think that's, yeah, it is bizarre. I, I, Unfortunately, the way I drive, it would be completely wasted on me. <laughs> Believe you me. <laughs> um, and to any one more example of where you've seen the best implementation, whether it's a, a life-changing smart cities point of view or from, from an IoT perspective. I think I think healthcare is clearly going to be the the you know the ultimate application of IoT, and you know I've seen many interesting things that are showing great promise. I mean. You know, for, for thousands of years, the ultimate aim of, of humanity, I mean, it has been eternal life, hasn't it? You know, what, and all sorts of myths around that. But could IoT actually deliver mm. eternal life? Because we're going to start to become ourselves augmented. Even, you might say, Android, based on earlier conversations, we're going to start implanting. So I worked, you know, you, if you've anybody who's read my book, Thingalytics, will see case studies like Medtronic, where they're putting in, you know, the artificial pancreas, for example, where you're sensing blood sugar levels and you've got an insulin pump that's pumping out. So you're starting to build systems in there. At Plat One, we worked with um, in a European-funded project, which was going to the next generation of elderly care. So the elderly, you know, we've got a we've got an issue with the elderly. There's, they're living longer, and we it, not everyone can afford a care home, or we haven't got the resources to do it. So, and they often the elderly want to live in their own home. So, if they have a crisis, a health crisis, um, sometimes they might pay to have one of these buttons they press, but. What if they're incapacitated and they can't press the button? Or what if you know they've left the button over there? So monitoring, simple monitoring, video sensors around the home that can be connected to the emergency services that can deliver that kind of you know elder care in and keep them in their home longer, so they're happier, their family's happier, they, they, they their money is preserved. So you know, eternal life, happier elderly, and we'll be we'll be chipped. That's what you're saying, John, isn't it? I, I don't know if we'll be chipped, but we'll yeah. certainly be, well, I yeah. guess if we're starting to implant yeah. things, yeah, yeah may, maybe we will be, but maybe maybe it's for the yeah. best. I mean, it's an ethical question, I don't know, yeah. but, but it's certainly compelling to you know, not die. No, <laughs> it's all about life extension. <laughs> it is. In fact, um, there's I, a friend of mine has, has got a company that he's just exploring this, Big, you know, big data. Well, he's taking his wearable heart monitor, just even could potentially you do this something like a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, monitoring the, the signals from that and being able to predict with, say, 20 seconds um, when you're going to have a heart attack. Oof. And he's got fairly good data that, that he's, he's, he's getting within 85% of being able to do this. Now, what would you pay if somebody said, I can give you 20 seconds warning um, before you're going to have a heart attack? That's pretty valuable, isn't That's it? That's pretty impressive. Strap on a defibrillator vest. Is that gives me long enough, though. Uh, it would, to, if you had your defibrillator but, but guess, with you, yeah. strap it on, and call. it would automatically call an ambulance. That's impressive. Mm. That is really impressive. So, John, it's been great talking to you today. Thank you, um, sir. I'm going to plug John's book. Um, Thingalytics, um, please buy a copy, fantastic read. John Bates, futurist, author, and CEO uh, of uh, Test Plant. Test Plant, even. Um, brilliant having you on today. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.